Welcome to the first episode of First Impressions. This is a series that we will be giving you our first impressions of video games. This is Mario Plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle. We just bought this game. It's day one. Today, when you've seen it, if it's still today, I think in some areas it's not today, but in the most part, uh, wherever we are, it's today. The day it came out. So, first I'm going to go over the particle effects. I find that the particle effects are nothing special. They don't wow me. They're not anything that blows my mind. It's not like amazing, realistic particle effects. It's not overused either. Particle effects aren't overused at all. And on top of that, they seem to get the job done, although nothing special, keep in mind. Um, they also add on to the environmental effect, so if you're in an area with trees, there'll be leaves flying across the screen. And if you walk through some flowers, hearts will pop out of the flowers, but beyond that, there's no special crazy things going on. I would have been fine if they sacrificed the amount of particles if it meant a more polished end result. Um, at the end of the day, it seems like there is no Nintendo polish. The background seems super animated, almost to the point where you can't tell... Well, it, almost to the point where it doesn't look like um, background, it looks like more environment that you can go into. It's all very well thought through. You can tell that they put a lot in the background. It's just sad that the game plays so fast that you can't stop and look for so long. Next we're going into character design. The character design is very simplistic. They stick to the original character design. Um, you can tell that they adapted the Rabbids world theme into the, the uh, colors and overall um, feel of the character design. But overall very enjoyable and satisfying. For weapon designs, you can clearly tell that the weapon design team had a lot of fun as the weapons are very creative and showcase a lot of different unique names that they seem to have put a lot of thought into. I like to imagine that they had a lot of fun with those names. There's one it's called the Hell in a Shell. It's a pretty sweet name for a weapon. It just seems like they had a lot of fun and the, they look like a good job on the weapons. Um, the weapons are fairly balanced, they have different abilities, and they're fun to like blast people across the map when you can. The overall color palette is the next we're going to talk about. It's very fun, vibrant colors, um, happy feeling. Uh, whoever chose this specific color palette and the colors for each thing knew exactly what they were looking for. I find that the textures in this game are lacking in the good department. They're very simplistic and they don't seem to be doing too much for the environment as in making it look like it's believable. The bump mapping just does not pop out enough in the textures that where it looks like it's actually leaves on the ground or it looks like it's actually grass on the ground. But they do use some hair in the on top of the textures which looks a lot better. But I still think it's a little a, too little for how much grass there is in the game. Most of the textures you can give uh, a high resolution feel, yet it still feels lifeless for some reason. Shading? Uh, the shading isn't a crucial for a game, but definitely affects the immersion. This is mostly where you find the limitations of the Nintendo Switch's power, uh, such as certain spots you'll see where the Nintendo Switch lacking in processing power, and that can definitely take you out of the immersion. The level design in this game is very good. As you go into battles, you'll find that the designs to run around and jump around and find places to hide and shoot and t being tactical in these environments is very easy because of the layout. It seems very balanced between the players and the enemies. Um, now we're going to go into gameplay, the battle system. I think that it was extremely fun and very strategic. If you're not playing strategic, it's not going to be as fun or as utilized. If you're not into the strategy-based RPG-style tile games, then this might not be the game for you. Walking around in the environment is mostly fun. You find yourself wanting to return to areas just to see stuff you might have missed, and you just kind of see the environment that you were in and find some coins and maybe some secrets on the way. When you're walking around in environments, you find that areas that you have to press A, um, 
These are things that you can interact with, like when you go talk to Beepo, the little rolling vacuum on the ground, he goes and comments on things that are in the background, just showing you that they took everything into interest. As one example would be when, um, when you go to Peach's Castle, right before Peach's Castle, you can press A and wham, it'll tell you some backstory on why it looks like it does, or he'll comment on small things like rabbits playing around or smacking each other. Now we have unlockable abilities. Um, they look and seem important to focus on and can be a game changer, but for the most part what we played, I don't know what they do. They kind of look important, but we still have more in the game to figure out. Um, during, uh, for the skill tree, it seems like it, it seems like it adds to the battle aspect, but it doesn't seem like it's worthwhile to get some upgrades, like the sentry turret. It seems kind of pointless, it just seems like another gun you could be using. I haven't fully explored it yet, I plan to, just to see if it is actually worth the skill points I spent on it, but it just right now it doesn't seem like it's too much of a useful attribute. On top of that, it seems like, for some reason, the rabbits have higher cost skill point stuff, which is harder to level up, and you start off with two rabbits, so using those skill points is a little bit more difficult than it should be. Um, now we're going to talk about in-game puzzles. Um, they're a very creative way of giving you a reason to play and gives you a fun thing to do in between tra transitions, between fights, um, and it gives you a meaning to stay entertained and continue playing. The weapons in the game are, when you start off in the game, your weapons are just kind of normally powered. It seems to be doing the job. Once you get to the first mini boss of the game, it seems like your weapons are inadequate at that time. They seem pointless, they seem like they're not doing enough damage and you haven't unlocked anything that actually does a significant more amount of damage. And it's rough at that time because, spoilers, you don't get your skill tree until you beat that boss. So beating it with that, uh, with the weak weapons you had before, is a little bit more difficult. But once you beat that boss, you get more powerful weapons. So I think that later on in the game you're going to see a lot more powerful weapons as you beat bosses. For playable characters, there's a very limited amount of characters available. I believe there's a total of 8 to 9. Um, we haven't unlocked most of them in-game, but the nice thing is each one varies in its ability, stats, and are very different from the last. So it creates diversity and can make your battles interesting. I've only seen a couple of the enemies in the game. There are hoppers I've seen, and there are can't remember the other one, but he's got spiky hair. Um, what I've seen with these guys is that they can usually don't work together with their when they're different species. They don't seem to be working together. I don't know if that continues throughout the game, but the hoppers and the spike hair guys don't seem to get along when they're fighting me. It could just be that it's the first level and they're just not, you know, doing higher technique stuff on you but it just seems like the AI isn't congruent between species of rabbits. And on top of that, um, the, species, the same species, the spike hair and spike hair, they work really well together, and the hoppers and hoppers, they work really well together. Hidden areas. Um, they're easy to miss. Make sure you keep your eyes open. For the most part, uh, they don't give good items, uh, usually soundtracks or trophies, so they're fun to find things and give small little rewards, but at the end of the day, most of the items don't really matter. I think the hub world in this game is very creative. You can run around uh, Mushroom Castle, Peach's Castle, or whatever it's called. Um, you can, there seems, there's like, what, five levels that you can go in between, and I think it's a very creative hub world as in you get to go to laboratories and check out different areas of the map and it seems like the hub world can teleport you to places very quickly as they have that cannon that you can fly yourself to and it seems like it leads to different worlds and when there's different worlds that bleed into the hub world you can tell that it's a different world it's very artistic in that way the level system so far, um, we're not far enough in the game to fully understand what the level system has to offer, 
From what we can find, we get small increases in health after a certain amount of battles. There's also, when you play the game, there's skill points. I'm not sure how to get those skill points, if there's some XP you can be getting, or if it only comes from bosses. For boss battles, it seems like all the bosses have multiple ways to beat them. It doesn't just have to be one way. When I was fighting the mini boss in the first world, I found that you could injure the mini boss just by being next to it, and then it can blow itself up. And it's also, um, you can also beat the boss just by fighting it just mono e mono between your characters. And I'm not sure if there's another way to beat that boss, but the best way that I did it was just to beat it myself and tactilely slap the boss with my gun. At the beginning of the game, it's fairly easy, but uh, quickly ramps up in difficulty after a few levels, and outside of the tutorial, it forces you to utilize all dynamics they taught you in the tutorial. The item shop is a many, a surmountable amount of weapons you could be using. Uh, they all seem to be mostly inexpensive, but expensive in the fact that you have no coins because you spent your money on a weaker weapon. But mostly all the characters have different weapons. Peach has a different weapon than Rabid Peach, and Mario has a different weapon than Rabid Mario, and Peach has a different weapon than Luigi, and Luigi has a different weapon than Rabid Luigi. For collectibles, so far nothing found was worthwhile. Um, they're mostly pointless items. There could be something worthwhile later on, but we'll continue to explore and see if there's anything that ensues. For the fact that this is a Switch and you can take it with you, I find that this game is portable. It's easy to play on the go. You shouldn't have... It's, it's easy to hop into without too much investment. It's not like Skyrim where you hop on and you're like, you gotta sit on this game for 10 hours just to even get an inch in the game. This game is very fast flow so you shouldn't have to worry about investing too much time it's gonna be fun on the go I think that Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle is a fresh new iteration of the Mario and Rabbids franchise uh, it incorporates a lot of tile based strategy RPG elements but still keeps within a beginner base that helps any consumer or player easy to grasp the concept Overall, I think it's a great game, and I look forward to playing more. I mostly enjoy the game. It's a very good game. It seems to have a lot of thought put into it. I think the only shortcomings I can find is in that there's, it seems to have large level gaps that are closed by you repeating doing things. Like, it's hard to find coins, but if you die, it's pretty easy to find coins because they're all there now. Or if you flip in between worlds, it's easy to find coins. So if you get stuck in the game, there's no more flow, it just kind of dies right there. That's when the game can get a little tedious, but beyond that, it's pretty easy to pop out of and get pop right back into the fun gameplay. Overall, it's just a good game. I recommend getting it. It looks fun. It is fun. It's tactile. I'm not sure how difficult the game gets, but for now it's pretty easy. And that's just the first world. Um, there's four plus worlds, I think. Maybe there's just four. I'm not sure, I haven't beaten the game myself, but for now, World 1, it looks pretty easy. I had a little bit of trouble on the first boss, but not too much of a trouble where I spent hours grinding. Overall, just a regular good game. Got Mario in it, couldn't really go wrong with that. I rate this game 3 out of 5. So far what I've seen, I enjoy most of the playable content. I enjoy to see what else they might add on to it such as DLC levels and areas. If they don't add that, I'm perfectly fine with it. With what I've seen so far, I'd rate it a 3 out of 5.